Kaioken! Now this is an awesome scene. One of my favorites, in fact, from the entire scene. It's not canon. But what? It's not canon. It's filler. Akira Toriyama never wrote that. What? Now, don't worry if you didn't know that. I mean, not many people really do. Nor should they. If there's one thing that Dragon Ball Super could have done a better job with, besides character designs, animation schedule, character writing, story pacing, and public relations in general, really, it's that Dragon Ball Super has done a very poor job at establishing what is and isn't canon. The canon of an anime is the story from the manga it's adapted from, or more specifically, it's the script the author of the story wrote. For example, in Dragon Ball Z, the Frieza vs. Goku fight is canon to the story because it appears in the manga written by Akira Toriyama. However, Gohan returns to fight Frieza midways through that fight isn't canon. It was included by the animation studio Toei and thus is considered filler. This, you might have realized, in relation to Dragon Ball Super creates an even more complicated problem. Akira Toriyama isn't directly creating the Dragon Ball Super manga like he did back in the day with Dragon Ball, which results in moments like this. Oh, he's gonna do the Kaioken thing. Watch, he's gonna, it's gonna be awesome. Oh, yeah, that, okay. This is understandably disappointing for viewers that were expecting the Kaioken. And all of this confusion spawns from one place. A lack of clarity with what is and is not canon in Dragon Ball Super. But fret not, I have found a way. Okay, so in a nutshell, when Dragon Ball Super was in the concept stage, Akira Toriyama wasn't really prepared to continue the manga by himself, and so instead, he wrote a rough outline of the story he wanted to tell and left both Toyotaro with the manga and Toy Animation with the anime to fill in the gaps on their own. These notes that Toriyama wrote are the real canon of Dragon Ball Super, and that's what we're here to find today. This therefore means that if we compare the anime with the manga, we will find that what is the same is canon and what is different is the filler. So let's begin. The Resurrection F movie from 2015 is a weirdly paced story, but it is 100% an Akira Toriyama product. The movie serves, therefore, as the true canon of that story. The 2012 Battle of Gods film, however, was written in an era without Dragon Ball Super in mind, and thus you have lines like this. Yeah, so the movie is a little outdated, and so we gotta use the anime instead. I'm gonna try to get through this as fast as possible. The following is filler. <gasps> The species that serves Beerus and Whis do not have specific designs provided by Akira Toriyama. There's no giant snake subplot with Goten and Trunks, thank god. Episodes 2, 3, and 4 of Dragon Ball Super are filler, including Vegeta's family vacation. That's a shame. Goku's body reacting to Beerus on its own, acting as a prelude to Ultra Instinct, does not happen in the manga, and therefore is also filler. This, however, is canon. The manga shows a lot of Shampa and Vados in this particular arc, but that too is filler, as it does not happen in the anime. Strangely, there's no peel-off gang in the manga during this section either, so unless Toyotaro is ignoring or skipping through this story, that means the peel-off gang isn't necessarily canon yet in Dragon Ball Super. And finally, Goku doesn't fight Beerus in Super Saiyan form after losing his god power without realizing it. And that concludes Battle of Gods, and now it's time for Universe 6. The entire first episode of the anime with Goku and Vegeta training, Beerus and Shampa having some sort of food competition, and the tournament rules being decided upon it is pretty much canon. Minus a few specifics like the food Shampa brought, where the scenes take place, and the fat jokes at Shampa's expense. It's also explained that the winner will receive a wish with the Super Dragon Balls. There's a really nifty fight scene between Beerus and Shampa that takes place in the manga, but it's, say it with me now, filler. Goku and Vegeta rendezvous back at Bulma's place to unload all of the information and make a plan to find the remaining Super Dragon Ball. Oh, Tights exists. She's canon. Jaku is called upon to escort Bulma to that big, weird, jellybean looking plot to I, I mean, Zuno, the entity that answers any question. What I think is particularly funny about this analysis is that it also pinpoints the Akira Toriyama jokes because they appear in both versions. I like to think he leaves really vague outlines for most of the story and then suddenly gets really specific about the wording of a particular joke. Like Piccolo finally understanding that Saiyans like strong women or when Bulma's chest size is revealed. While all of this is happening, Shampa and Vados are hard at work creating the arena the tournament will take place in. The location of the tournament is canon, but the aesthetic of the arena itself was left up to interpretation, with the anime and manga differing considerably. While Goku and Vegeta recruit Piccolo and Majin Buu, Bulma arrives at Zuno's place. In the anime, Jaku apprehends a criminal near the entrance. That is filler as it does not happen in the manga. Bulma is granted three questions and while getting the information she wants through EXPOSITION, which is canon, she also wastes most of the questions, 
which is also canon. Goku and Vegeta electing to use the remainder of their time in the chamber, three years, is canon. However, the awesome shot of them reliving their fight in the Saiyan Saga as Super Saiyan Blue from the manga isn't canon. Additionally, bearded Goku and Vegeta aren't canon either. Monaka, however, is canon. And his introduction to Goku as the strongest fighter from Universe 7 is too. But the location which the introduction takes place differs, and so there is no set canon introduction space for these characters. Whis's transportation cube is canon, and the gang that travels there to spectate is also canon. I confirmed this by cross-referencing the manga's gang with this incredibly high-quality image from episode 32. Now that's how you draw a woman. When they arrive, we meet all of the same characters, even that weird alien penguin thing that sings the anthem of the universe. Everything is pretty consistent with both versions besides the circumstances Universe 7 meets the other fighters from Universe 6. In the manga, they are lined up, and in the anime, they are sitting in some waiting area. Additionally, the area where they sit the written test is different also. The test, however, is canon, and so is Goku barely scraping by. What's more is that there isn't actually a canon reason for why Boo fails the written test. He just fails it. One way in the manga and a different way in the anime. The tournament begins and the order in which the fighters from these universes fight is the exact same with the same results. This was clearly on Toriyama's outline, but many of the fights differ. However, both Tamo and Goku's fight hits pretty much all the same signposts. Goku struggles initially because he ate too much, warms up and starts getting the upper hand. Botamo reveals that he has some secret ability, but Goku eventually outsmarts him by judo throwing him out of bounds. It's a very Toriyama fight. Frost is up next for Universe 6, and again, his fight is almost entirely canon. Fake good guy transforms into his third form before rushing into his final, using cheating tactics with poison to overcome Goku. There's a trend, however, with these fights. The major points of the fight are canon, but the little bits in between where they talk differ, and some of the action does too. For instance, during Piccolo's fight, there are very few specifics besides him performing better than expected and ultimately losing due to poison as well. No special beam cannon and no Demon King Piccolo reference from the manga. That's all filler. Jacko's eyesight, however, is canon. Seeing through Frost's underhanded tactics, Piccolo volunteers to step down for Vegeta and he quickly takes down Frost. The speed of this isn't canon, however. The manga's version sees him toying with Frost a lot more. Strangely, the only part of the Megeta fight with Vegeta that's actually canon is that he's much tougher than expected and ultimately loses because he doesn't like being insulted, which means no Gallic gun, final flash, or dome around the fight from the anime. It's all filler. The Kappa versus Vegeta fight is largely canon. Kappa starts off well is pushed into turning Super Saiyan by Vegeta and ultimately is taken down easily using Super Saiyan Blue, making Kaba Vegeta's new pupil. There's a moment in the anime where Frost tries to sneak away to steal the cube and the reward, but is intercepted by Hit. This is completely filler. Hit vs Vegeta is largely canon. Vegeta tries his best as Super Saiyan Blue but can't quite get the job done. Vegeta not having any advice for Goku is also canon. Piccolo finds out that Monaka is a fraud, and so it's all down to Goku. The beginning of the fight is completely canon. Goku choosing to use his base form through trial and error, figuring out how Hit's time skip really works. They specifically tried to explain how Hit's time skip works and why Goku can eventually overcome it in the manga, but in the anime it isn't nearly as clear, so, so it's not a canon Toriyama explanation and so Toriyama doesn't even know how it works. The rest of the fight, though, isn't canon. There's no Super Saiyan God like there is in the manga, and there's no Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 10 like there is in the anime. Goku does quit, however, leading to Hit taking the fall against Monaka. This is all canon. Additionally, Zeno arriving and immediately befriending Goku is also canon. <laughs> Fun fact, the vast majority of the future Trunks arc is filler, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest. The canon parts are, the first episode almost entirely, although the fashion Bulma dies at the hands of Black isn't certain. Trunks fling to the past, Trunks fighting with Goku, Zamasu traveling into a planet's future with Gowasu, Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks traveling into the future, Super Saiyan Rose's unveiling, Beerus erasing Zamasu in their timeline. That was awesome. The main cast fighting Goku Black and Zamasu before retreating to their past, Vegito's fight, the Mafuba, and finally the circumstances surrounding Zamasu's eventual defeat at the hands of Zeno, resulting in the weirdest and most unsatisfying ending I've ever seen in Dragon Ball. That's all canon. Everything else, however, is filler. Yep, Goku Black traveling to the past to investigate? Filler. Goku Black going Super Saiyan in the manga? Filler. Vegeta's Gamma Burst flash in the manga? Filler. 
Killer! There's definitely no weird but awesome new Super Saiyan transformation for Trunks. No father-son Gallic gun. No father-son talk about how much Bulma loves Vegeta. No Trunks spirit sword. No army of fused Zamasu. No ascended Super Saiyan Blue. No diffusing of Zamasu. And no, Zamasu turning into the sky isn't canon either. There's so much stuff in this story's telling from both the manga and the anime that isn't Akira Toriyama, which begs the question, how much of this story did Toriyama actually write? My guess is not a lot. Before we open up the crazy basket of spiders that is the universe survival arc, it should go without saying that any of the filler episodes between the arcs are entirely that. Filler! The Patafu arc, all of the episodes before the universe survival arc, including Goku and Krillin's mini arc, that's all filler. Now, onto the universe survival arc! <laughs> The entire beginning of this arc is pretty much canon, from Goku selling his produce to getting ambushed by some criminals, as well as his travelling up to Beerus' homeworld where he, against Beerus' wishes, teleports using the Zeno button to remind him about the tournament he spoke about. Oh, and Bulma is pregnant! There is this really cool fight scene in the manga between Vegeta and Beerus where Vegeta gains the upper hand momentarily. But that, my friends, is dirty stinking filler. There's no room for that in this video. We gotta save space for Goku putting the universe at risk with Zeno, which is canon. There is a battle between the Gods of Destruction in both versions, however they don't share many similarities beyond them involving Gods of Destruction. I wouldn't consider it specifically canon. Additionally, there is no exhibition tournament involving Universe 7 and Universe 9. Goku does face off, however, against Toppo, but the circumstances he finds himself in are entirely different in both versions, with the outcomes differing completely. Maybe Goku fighting Toppo before the tournament is canon, but nothing else about it really is. At this point, you might have also noticed that there are tons of vague plot points dotted throughout this story. And you'd be 100% right. And so Goku sets out to gather his universe's strongest fighters. Boo falls asleep and Frieza is recovered from the dead to participate, but the circumstances behind their recruitment is entirely different or not shown. Which leads me to believe that Toriyama wrote down the list of participants with extremely vague outlines for how they meet or come to join their team. Except for 17. 17's recruitment happens almost exactly the same way in both versions for the most part. It's almost like he was important to the story or something. There's no skinny in shape Boo from the anime, there's no introduction to Jiren's character like in the manga, that's a shame, and the reveal of Universe 6's Saiyans differs somewhat too. That said, all of the characters of significance from the tournament are completely canon, and while Frieza's recruitment from the episodes 94 and 95 of the anime aren't canon, there are aspects to them that are. Both versions see Goku confront Frieza in the cocoon, and both versions end in them having come to blows for some reason. Everything else in the middle, however, is filler. And now, onto the tournament. I'm sure none of you will be surprised to hear that the 34 episode long Tournament of Power is almost entirely filler. It does begin somewhat the same with Goku, Vegeta, the androids, and Frieza leaping into solo competition immediately as the tournament begins. But that's about where the similarities end. Despite the lineup being the same, Gohan is wearing different clothing in the manga, and Seventeen scores the first ring out in that version too. In other words, who eliminates who? For the vast majority of the tournament isn't canon. It's quite all over the place in terms of continuity. One thing that does happen across both both versions, however, is the Frost and Frieza truce that is made, and Frost does eliminate Krillin. That said, Frieza does betray this treaty between the two characters as soon as the opportunity presents itself. But again, there is no fixed circumstances for this to take place. Universe 9 is the first universe to go in both versions, and therefore is canon. Goku's first scuffle with Jiren in the anime, however, is not. It is almost entirely different in the manga. My guess is that Toriyama never wrote anything for this section other than Jiren being the one to knock hit out. The order in which Universe 7 team is eliminated differs also. In the anime, it's Krillin, Tien, Roshi, Piccolo, 18, and so on. But in the manga, Roshi outlasts Krillin, Tien, 18, Piccolo, and even Gohan. On top of that, he even holds his own against Jiren, but don't worry, that's not canon either. And some good news, Kale and Kalifla do fuse and create Kefla, though there is no battle with Ultra Instinct Goku. Additionally, the circumstances by which Goku achieves his first taste of Ultra Instinct is not similar, thus making the state of Ultra Instinct canon, but the means by which it is achieved different. Toppo becoming a god of destruction is also not canon, but Vegeta putting up a fight against Jiren in his first outing with the character is. Additionally, Seventeen and Frieza tag-teaming Jiren is canon, and so is the self-destruction Seventeen performed in an attempt to eliminate 
eliminate the fighter. Vegeta's elimination isn't canon. He is seen fighting in the manga up until the very end alongside Goku before falling off seconds before Frieza tackles both Jiren and Goku into the void. So, in a sense, it taking both Goku and Frieza to eliminate Jiren is canon. The winner being 17, Universe 7 winning, Frieza being brought back to life, and the other universes being restored, that is all canon also. And finally, all of the events of Dragon Ball Super Broly are 100% canon as the script and character designs were created by Akira Toriyama. In conclusion, Dragon Ball Super is a mess and it makes my head hurt, but at least now you know what is and isn't canon. Maybe, kinda, I don't know, subscribe!